okay, okay, valvular disorders. You know, when we talk about valvular disorders, we're talking about those valves that are in between the different chambers within the heart and the ones that lead out to the lungs, the one that leads out to the rest of the body through the aorta, okay? Some general vocabulary that you probably learned in level one, but I just want to make sure that we remember what this is talking about so that when we bring these terms up, you know exactly what we're saying, okay? So cardiac output. A, it's the output of the heart, right? Um, it's the amount of blood, the volume of blood that's pumped out of the heart every minute, okay? In one minute, the amount of blood pumped out, cardiac output. Very important that you know this, okay? On average, um, a healthy adult is pumping out four to eight liters of blood every single minute out of the heart. That is a ton. Considering, here, let me show you, this water bottle is only half of a liter, okay? So every two of these is one liter. And that means that I, right now, as I'm talking to you, every one minute, I am pumping out roughly eight to 16 of these in a minute. That's crazy, isn't it? I think it's crazy. Um, it can be increased um, in two ways. If you increase your heart rate, then every contraction of the heart is pumping out more blood. Um, or if you increase the stroke volume, which let's look at the stroke volume. That's talking about the amount of blood that is pumped out of the heart every beat, every contraction. Okay, so every time the heart compresses, it's pushing out more and more blood. Okay, so the amount of blood that's pumped out every contraction. In a healthy average adult, 65 to 70 milliliters of blood is pumped out every time the heart beats. Okay, um, normal heart sounds, you should be pretty familiar with them the general love dub sound that you listen to when you auscultate the heart. I do want you to go online and search for normal and abnormal heart sounds and listen to them and see what you find. I know that on the point um, through your book that they have a lot of um, audio files that you can listen to to see the different heart sounds. All right, it's just pictures of the, of the valve. Um, you should know them by now, right? Right. Okay. All right, so we're going to talk about aortic valve disorders first. Aortic stenosis is the first one we're talking about. And when I say the word stenosis, think about that word, okay? Stenosis is talking about a hardening um, and narrowing, okay? So whenever we say stenosis, think about hard and narrow. Now, our valves, let's say that they look like this, okay? On a normal basis, whenever the heart contracts, it opens, allows the blood out, and comes right back. Now, if the valve is hard and narrow, what do you think is going to happen every time the heart contracts? Probably less blood is getting out, don't you think? I think so. Typically, this is caused because of um, calcium deposits that are forming on top of these valve leaflets. So leaflets. Um, it can be a consequence of a valve um, congenital defect that the patient has had since birth, or it can happen, you know, progressively as calcium is depositing on those leaflets. Um, let's see. Yeah, so it, it, ha it needs more force in order to push those hard, narrowed um, leaflets open to allow the blood to go through. But what happens when we have less blood coming out of that valve is that the left ventricle is going to enlarge and thicken and try to, you know, compensate for the blood staying within it instead of being pumped out, okay? Because we're talking specifically about that aortic valve. And that aortic valve is the one that leads the blood out to the body. And the last chamber that the blood is in before it goes out to the body is that left ventricle, right? So the blood is just kind of pooling there. It's staying there. It, the heart will eventually lose its ability to pump effectively and get the blood out of the heart and to the rest of the body. And so the blood just stays and eventually it's going to back up and cause heart failure. You will have a decreased cardiac output, which is what? The amount of blood pumped out every minute, right? Right. So a decreased cardiac output um, and eventually left-sided heart failure. Now whenever you have left-sided heart failure, think about the blood flow through the heart. Okay. If it backs up, it's backing up into the left atrium, and then where? To the lungs, right? That's not good. What do you think happens when the blood bump, uh, backs up back into the, um, into the lungs? You're right. It's going to have gurgling, crackling. You're going to hear it. All that fluid backing up into the lungs. It is not good. 
So here's a picture. Um, okay, so here's the aortic valve. Normal aortic valve opens, blood goes through the aorta, down into the body, right? This is the aortic arch, out into the body. Here's aortic stenosis. See the narrowing? Less blood is getting out of there, right? And so the left ventricle is having to compensate, and it's going to end up getting very much enlarged, and then that blood's going to back up. Not good. Signs and symptoms. These patients are going to feel somewhat asymptomatic for a very long time, okay? They're probably not going to notice it at first until it gets really, really bad. Um, and then they might not start noticing some dizziness, maybe some fainting, um, some chest pain, just because of the um, decreased cardiac output that they're experiencing, um, a weak carotid pulse, and that's just because they've got a low stroke volume. Every beat is just very minimal amount of blood that's coming out, right? Um, a split S2 sound. Take the time to stop and listen to these heart sounds, okay? But it sounds like lub t dub. There's a separation between the aortic and pulmonic valve closings, and then you hear that in there with the to dub, okay? Lub to dub, lub to dub, okay? Um, diagnostic tests that we can do to figure out what is going on with this patient and if they do have aortic stenosis, um, we'll get a chest x ray, and that's going to show us that left ventricle is thickening and, um, and pooling with blood. The EKG is going to show us R wave um, malformations. Um, the wave will be increased just because the force of, force of contraction is so great. Um, you're going to notice it on the EKG. And again, we'll look at these EKGs here in a minute. It'll make more sense to you. Um, if we get a heart cath, which we'll look at how to get a heart cath here in a minute, um, but it, it will give us direct visualization into that left ventricle and into that valve itself, and we'll be able to see the narrowed opening. Um, on that heart cath. To treat it, we want to give them digoxin um, in, in conjunction with diuretics just to help um, thin out the blood, decrease the workload on the heart, and just help it out as much as we can. Okay. Um, we want to restrict their sodium just to decrease the amount of fluid that's coming in um, into the body because, you know, water binds with sodium. And so if we have more sodium, we have more fluid. And if we have more fluid, that's more that the heart has to pump out. So if we decrease the sodium, we're likewise decreasing the amount of fluid decreasing the amount of fluid having to be pumped out through the heart, okay? Um, put them on some antibiotics because um, we want to prevent, especially if they've had um, any kind of infectious or inflammatory disease within the heart, like infective endocarditis, we want to give them the um, antibiotics that they need to take prophylactically to prevent recurrence of any of those infectious or inflammatory diseases. Um, give them some nitrates or beta blockers just to help relieve the chest pain. Maybe a balloon and valve hard to say this word, a balloon valvuloplasty. Good word, right? Valvuloplasty. Um, it's invasive, um, but it's non-surgical, and it just helps to enlarge that narrowed opening within that valve. Basically, they um, find, well, they use it the same way they do a heart cath, which we'll look at here in a minute. But they insert a guide wire directly into the heart, and there's a little balloon that's deflated on the end of it, and they will bring it up into that valve, space, okay, see here's our narrow valve opening, they'll insert this guide wire and then inflate the balloon and it'll stretch open that valve opening and just help to kind of stretch it out like you would a tight muscle so that you have more room to open um, or expand and contract, right? Um, if it's really bad and none of these things work, they might have to do a valve replacement on that aortic valve. That is our last ditch effort. It's not something we go to unless we absolutely have to. All right. I'm going to take a break and we're going to come back and talk about um, aortic regurgitation.